What's up guys? In this video, we're going to talk about the new TKS wallet. I'm going to go over the new features, the new market in the wallet, as well as the NFT that unlocks your transaction history feature and some plans about the wallet going forward. Let's get into it. Here's the new design out at teak.run. I'll be sure to link to all this stuff in the description of the video. So it's undergone a complete redesign. So now your NFTs are in a separate tab from your tokens. And we have a search bar that will filter on whatever NFT that you're searching for. And if the name is even cut off, the full text is there. So you'll be able to search on that. Um, I might add the ability to search on description. Let me know feedback for that. Uh, but that's certainly something that I could add. So you got the same thing here, right? I can search on golden eggshells or the money coin. And you can switch between tabs. And you'll notice here that the jig tab, this is really the NFTs, right? The jig is just the name for NFT in the run protocol. So your address here, this is your run owner address. And you'll notice that it's the same for the tokens. However, if I go to the purse, the address changes and that's for your BSV. And that's a design choice I made way back last year when I first implemented this wallet. And I know it's a bit confusing, but it's just a way to segregate the BSV from the tokens. And that way you don't um, mix the two and have a messy implementation. Even though it could be done with one, I decided to do with two. And yes, these are technically single. This is a single address wallet. Um, that's something I've thought about, you know, maybe going forward, I'll implement multi-address, but it was just the simplest to get something out to the public for them to test and use and uh, play with. So here it's the same thing. And we also have a QR code function here that will display so you can easily send BSV to. And the uh, send screens are the same as the previous version. So, you know, I have a little bit of Bitcoin here and I can send an amount. This is, I only specify Satoshi amount, not fiat. And I can send to either PayMail or an address there. And the send, send max is supported. So you can do that, just copy and paste it and it will work. Um, that's something I've noticed is not in a lot of wallets. Even surprisingly, some of the uh, financial exchange wallets like Abra, they don't support this. It's pretty funny. Like it, you have to really, you have to like mess with the amounts. So that's something it took me a bit to get, get it right. But even a lot of the BSV wallets don't support this properly. Um, some will give you a trigger. I think simply cash and hand cash will, but for others, you have to do like ca manual calculation to send max for this wallet. So that's just something I wanted to point out. Okay. So let's go back here. So, um, of course we have our history page. I'll get into that in a second. It is gated. You need ownership of this tome of history NFT. So shout out to Nate of the, uh, Ash can, uh, publications. He did a great job with this art. I really like it. And um, I've already gotten good support. So thanks to everyone who's purchased this. And I'll, I'll get into that in a second. Okay. Um, another thing I want to talk about with this wallet. So let's go into the hamburger menu. So we have a new design here with the, you can click the suitcase here to go back to the home page. So, and that'll just refresh it. And that's important when we get to the market, but here's the setting. So let's check this out. So you can back up your seed and restore it, right? And this is all in the client. There's no backend for this wallet. This, there's, this is only a simple server that hosts the static HTML pages. Everything is stored in the browser. So that comes with certain trade-offs, right? That means that if you clear your cache and you haven't backed up your seed, it is what it is, right? And I'm aware of that. But again, this is not, I'm not trying to compete in the BSV wallet space or the crypto wallet space. This, I've always looked at this as a tool to help people give them an alternative and also for developers to build on. This wallet is open source and it has been since March of last year. So I would like people to just take this code and implement it into their site with their own design and, you know, really use that to bootstrap uh, functionality and, you know, giving their users more, um, quite frankly, useful stuff, right? So, okay. So I'm not going to go over these options. Please leave the defaults. Um, there are two in here. So I talked about that address split thing, the purse and the owner. So let's go back real quick. So this is your owner address. And then this is the purse. The purse holds the BSV. Owner owns the jigs and the tokens, the NFTs, right? So um, I, lots of people were sending BSV to the owner and vice versa. 
So I added these functions here. So you can click this and it'll prompt you if you want to transfer any accidentally sent tokens to your purse to the owner. So I don't have any. And or if you send Satoshis to the owner, you can transfer those to the purse. So that's there to handle that. You'll notice this Satoshi spending limit. This does not apply to being able to send BSV out of the wallet. This does apply to an upcoming API integration that I've been working on. Some of the players in the space have uh, taken a look at it. It's not completely ready yet, but if that's something you're interested in testing, please reach out to me and I can give you access. Um, it's gonna be gated at first because it's still being iterated on and I wanna get the API right before giving it out to the public. But yes, you will be able to integrate web apps with this wallet. So again, this is protection for that. So that, you know, one of these apps couldn't just drain all your BSV. Okay. So a little coming soon there for you guys. All right. Um, now let's go into the history part. Okay. So we've got the, mar you can go to the market here, right? So I've already got this open in a tab. So I've built in a in-wallet market. You'll see that it's already here, right? So you can just click that to go into it. So you never have to leave the app to purchase this NFT. And, you know, all of them are for sale here. We only show the title and the description, the on-chain description. So if we go to Relay, you can see it's the same thing because I'm pulling this directly from the chain. So I don't use any of the Relay APIs. I, these are all my own independently getting them from the Bitcoin SV ledger. Now here's the contract and you can see it's the same, right? So the description right here is the same. And then the one, the thing I want to point out is this royalty part, right? So you can see it's 7% and this is to Nate for his artwork. He minted this NFT and he wanted to do so because to demonstrate that he is the artist, right? And then he sent them all to me so I could sell them, right? So you see that 7% is there. Now, if I click one of these to buy one, you'll also notice I, I programmed the royalty into this market. Now, it's my choice, right? I could have left it off. Royalties are not enforced in Bitcoin script with the way these orders are put on the chain. Only the payment, so only the, the 0.1 BSV part here is enforced in Bitcoin script. And I'm adding a 2.5% fee, which does undercut relays 3%. So I've noticed people have been buying these on Relay. If you want to save a little bit of sats and support my new functionality, wallet, market, please purchase through teak.run instead, right? So I can purchase here. I don't have enough money in my wallet. So um, I'll do that and then do, uh, show off the transaction history. All right, now I've got a little bit of sats in here. So I can, and I can click between these to show the BSV and the USD amount of Bitcoin that I have. So now if we go back into here, let's just refresh this page real quick. Okay, now I can purchase one. So I, if I click this and purchase here, my total is going to be the 0.1095 BSV. So the royalty to Nate, as well as the fees to my, my own self for my application. So let's just click purchase here. Should be a little faster. It's slow this time. Um, I think once you buy one, it does speed it up. But yeah, so it's purchase. We can click the TXID. So here you can see there's the 0.1 payment for the actual NFT. Here's the royalty to Nate. And then here is the fee to myself, right? So if we check that 12LT address and we go here, that matches this royalty address to Nate, right? And then here's the run transaction and then the output for the actual NFT. Now, if I come back here and refresh the screen, there's my Tome of History. You can see it in my wallet. And now if I go to the history, it's unlocked. Um, I do need to, I will have to refresh this screen in order to let the history process because it'll, it will backdate. So it's the entire history of those two addresses and it'll pop up into here. So let's just refresh this again. And it'll take a bit to load here. But um and yeah, I can still navigate while it loads all this stuff in the background. And, you know, I mentioned at the beginning of this video, everything's in the browser. So the browser has a very nice database functionality called IndexedDB. And I heavily rely on that with the UTXOs as, and the run caching, as well as the history page. So all that stuff is stored in your browser. And as you, after you populate the history the first time, and you can see it's all here now, um, 
everything is there. So you can see all the history that I've done just to get this wallet populated. You know, I have some Schwa's and BSV. And this history is accurate. It shows your BSV and your uh, NFT stuff. So you can see the plus one of that transaction. So this BB, so and it matches, right? And then there's the BSV when I sent the uh, amount to the wallet. And you can see um, that's real time, but um, this might be because it's in a block already. No, not yet. Okay. But yeah, so you can see the transaction history here too. Um, I do plan on adding CSV export to this that will be supported by any tax software or whatever. I don't really like taxes, but it is what it is. I know that's a feature that people want from these wallets. So I will add that, the ability to export that out. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show here. Um, I wanted to talk about the really that marketplace. So uh, let me just go back here. So uh, I do want folks to support this. And I mentioned that the wallet is open source. That means this is open source too. Now it does rely on APIs from Morning Run, but those come from a RunDB instance. So a lot of the code here is here if you want to build your own NFT fungible token marketplace with run and it's in here is how to do the royalties as well as the fees for yourself So again, this is really meant to bootstrap this space and you know incentivize development So I, I hope people take this and know, you know, I'm you know, I'm making this video shilling for myself But I, I think there's some powerful stuff here and I really want to see folks iterate on this Okay, so just to talk about that a nice github link is here to the open source repo uh, updated it yesterday with all the stuff and there's some docs you can read on how the wallet works uh, Of course Twitter and my YouTube channel and then there's a telegram group So please join that and that's where I'll be accepting feedback and any suggestions for the wallet and generally discuss about what's here What you guys want to see going forward? I do plan on fully supporting this wallet and as I mentioned, you know API stuff is Technically, it is available. It's not assumed. It's just, you know, private right now. So again, that's if you're interested in that, please reach out and I can help you guys get access to that and start working with it so I can iterate and making those APIs really nice. Okay, that's really what I wanted to discuss. Uh, let me know of any feedback and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.